If you own the laptop armed with the GTX 960M, can it play the Battlefield 1? The answer is yes, yes it can. But what setting works best? Well, it depends on you. Let's see some benchmarks and how they compare visually as well as the performance in frame rates. Do something, Edward! We can't be sitting here for long! We can't be sitting here for long! So here are the results. I concluded that for the small change in resolution, I can gain up to 18 frames per second in the low detail setup. Lowering the resolution a bit offloads the GPU utilization, and that's where I am leaning towards. Now let's take a look at fine tuning that 900p resolution. We can't be sitting here for long! Do something! What's this stuff, you clown? So these are the options I chose to keep for myself here. Uh, texture quality as well as terrain quality highly depends on your video RAM capacity. Mine's only a 2 gig and uh, this game Battlefield 1 can go up to 3 gigs if needed. But I want to keep it at high for both of them and uh, if you're running a 4 gigabyte, you possibly could run Ultra. You can try it yourself there. Texture filtering uses more of the GPU power, but that hardly changes anything. Uh, lighting quality also uses a lot of the GPU power because that computes uh, shadows and um, you know the lighting of objects right there. Effect quality is more about smoke, uh, the embers, and like the fire effects right there. That's more towards the GPU power. That's a little bit more important to me, so I chose to keep that at medium. And post-process quality hardly changes the frame rates, maybe just under 2 FPS. Now, mesh quality shouldn't affect uh, in other games, it doesn't affect too much right there. However, I notice every time I go up a little bit, it drops the frame rates about 2, maybe 3 frames per second.
The undergrowth quality is about the tree, like the details of the leaves uh, on the tree there, bushes, and that shows you a little bit more definition in it here. I chose to keep that at low still. That affects about three, maybe two frames per second around there. Anti-aliasing post affects the post-process anti-aliasing right there. I keep that off and that uses more towards the GPU side of things and ambient occlusion that uses a lot of GPU power to calculate indirect shadows cost around objects there. I personally find not much visual difference with it on. Now let me show you what it is like for performance when using this setup for multiplayers. We have lost objective Edward. That's an enemy scout. Enemy medic sighted. Okay, now we're moving. I can help! Chief, I need help. Behind you. <coughs> Yo, give me help. So use this recommendation as a guide. Every laptop is different. You have, might have a different CPU, uh, memory capacity, as well as heat dissipation capabilities. Also, find the right settings that's important to you. What's important to me, visually, might not be important to you at all. Thank you very much for watching. And if you're wondering if you should use DirectX 12, check out this link right here. And if you find this video helpful, leave a like. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Thank you very much and have yourself a great day.